Well, it's that time again. Welcome back to Kimmel and Cox, your source for all things entertainment. I'm Keith Cox. I'm joined, of course, by my good friend Dylan Kimmel. And if you missed last week's episode, man, it was good. Oh, we, yes. Very we good. Did, yeah. We did our uh, celebrity profile on Dan Aykroyd, mm-hmm. and uh, we've gotten a lot of positive response uh, with that so far. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, There's I, definitely more to come of those uh, celebrity profiles. Yes, absolutely. And um, just something uh, worth noting here, uh, there was actually a little bit of... Um, of extra stuff that you guys did not get the chance to see. Uh, we were running really long on time on that episode anyway, and so we were trying to trim the fat as much as we could. There's um, still, there was still a lot there that everyone missed. Yeah, th- there was a few things kind of missing. If it seemed a little odd or like something got cut out, it's because it did. Uh, it's It sort of made it seem like we stopped talking about uh, Dan's career at, right around uh, Christmas with the Cranks, uh, which was in 2004, and I'm like, he did, you know, he did plenty of stuff uh, after that. So anyway, uh, head on over to our Patreon page, and we actually have that um, deleted footage for you over there. That's the only place you're going to be able to see it. Uh, so that's a chance for you to check out that page and uh, some of the other benefits that we've got uh, offered over there and um but you can you can see uh that um, that extra footage so definitely uh check that out when you get a chance uh but now uh on to today's episode uh today uh we are going to be talking about pop culture uh in the 1980s uh certainly our favorite decade uh mm-hmm. hands down i think yeah. uh, I was actually a child of the 80s, uh, was born at the tail end of 1980 on December 21st. Dylan, on the other hand, uh, was not, uh, I was, but he still loves the 80s. I was barely even a concept. <laughs> uh, um, but yes, yes, the 80s, I, I adore the 80s because, well, honestly, there was that was like the, the, the best movie era in all honesty it really was Uh, you know movies tv music uh everything really just in the in the 80s it was so different than any other decade Uh, i don't i don't know why but it was just there were so many things going on culturally and politically and uh entertainment wise which of course is what we're going to be focusing on but yeah so um all right. Well, how how did the '80s treat you? Uh, I mean, it was a a very memorable time for me. Again, that was, you know, the the bulk of my childhood, basically from birth until uh, the age of nine uh, was spent in the '80s. So uh, there were just so so many, uh, you know, so many great things out there, um, you know, as far as. Uh, technology and the and the things that were you know developing then you know it was a it was a great time to be a kid I mean uh, you know arcades you know were all the rage back then uh, you know and arcade games which eventually transitioned into uh, video games you mm-hmm. know like you know home video games when they when they started well it kind of started a little bit before the eighties uh, but you know it didn't with, really boom until. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, with uh, with Nintendo and, like, uh, 85, I guess, was when it, when that home video, uh, the video game consoles really started blowing up. Uh, and I can remember uh, getting, you know, my first uh, Nintendo. Uh, our family had um, an Atari, an Atari 2600 before that, which was my brother's uh, video game console. That was, like... I think it was like what late 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 seventies, I think, when that came out. Um, but Nintendo was huge, and uh, I remember the um, I got uh, the original Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt were the two games that <laughs> that came with that uh, video game system. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and then of course, uh, you know, you had uh, you know home video, you know, with VHS. You know, uh, really 
uh, hit the market, you know, in the yeah. early 1980s. Uh, video, video was, again, was something that was slowly being introduced before that, maybe like the late 70s, but it was the 80s was when it really, really took off and, and you saw video rental stores popping up uh, everywhere. Ah. That was certainly a huge part of my childhood was going to the video store, mm. uh, you know, almost every weekend and, you know, renting yeah. a movie, just being able to, you know, that going from only being able to see a movie in the theaters to suddenly being able to watch it on your TV at home anytime you wanted, that was that was huge for mm-hmm. the entertainment industry. You know, I really miss video rental stores. I really do. Uh, streaming has really taken over. I mean, it's it's very convenient. I understand conveniency. We live in an age where conveniency is power. Yeah. And uh, I, I miss the simplicity of actually going to... Um, a, uh, a rental store and getting a movie. Uh, shoot, um, arcades, they ended up being, they ended up dying a little bit sooner than uh, uh, rental stores. Uh, but um, I do remember a few arcades, and those are, I mean, arcades are really fun too. It, it's um, it's the combination of a whole, you know, you going in there to play a video game, you're going in there to buy a movie, and you have. Um, a whole bunch of other strangers around you there that mm-hmm. are experiencing the same thing and you feel like you feel normal you feel like a, a piece of you know culture there yeah and um and even the movie theaters today are starting to feel like that's being forgotten as well it's sadly kind of, it is um you know that uh, that part of our uh, culture is is slowly waning i think it's it's coming back a little bit i mean obviously the pandemic mm-hmm. had a lot to do with movie theaters slowing down and just mm-hmm. not getting as much business uh but it, it's still not like it used to be um, yeah P- people have become a little bit more isolated a little bit more lone wolf yeah uh, that, that, that's kind of sad because me being an introvert that's that's not good for me <laughs> yeah i need someone that yeah. that that uh, you, you, will you need uh you bring need me something out. to yeah to to get you out of that that box and um and so many people do they would rather just sit at home and you know and binge watch on you know netflix or whatever their favorite uh streaming service is and Mm -hmm. so it's kind of sad really yeah i I definitely miss that too that was something that i always enjoyed um as a kid um but uh, you know speaking of of technology you know there were a lot of other things that were really uh that that are now commonplace that really started to make its way into society in the 80s uh cell phones uh, mm. you know or or rather car phones uh and you know one of the things that we kind of want to talk about is the way that um the way that the entertainment industry in particular uh, because that's what the show is about, and the ways that it influenced uh, popular culture. And I think yes, that's a good example of that, is because in the 80s you were starting to see all these movies with uh, like these uh, you know wealthy uh, executives and stuff driving mm-hmm. around in their like BMWs and Mercedes and you know convertibles with, uh, with these gigantic car phones uh, you know that yeah. actually still had, a cord attached to them like it was literally like having mm. a uh like a regular phone but you know in your car and that gradually transitioned into you know uh cell phones uh, you know with you know wireless uh, technology you know being developed uh but but then before you know it you know you start seeing more people driving around uh with those phones in their car carrying cell phones and and so, so that whole thing really kind of uh, started jumping uh, in the '80s. Uh, I feel like, you know, um, and, and uh, music uh, with, uh, you know, cassettes, uh, cassettes, and then uh, CDs, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before that, you had you know records uh, like LPs and eight, yeah. tr- eight tracks. Uh, but the '80s was really where 
you started seeing the little uh, the little cassettes, and I had tons of uh, of cassettes uh, I, as a kid. I remember my dad having a few uh, records of ZZ Top. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he would have a whole mess of um, little cassette tapes everywhere, um, and I wonder if if uh, cassette tapes will ever they probably won't ever come back either, just like VHS tapes because. I don't know. I mean, you 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 have the uh, the vinyl records have come back, but yeah. that's more like a, a, a like a sort of like a, a hobby, I guess. Or yeah, it, well, the sound is a little bit different too. Yeah, it, it's uh, definitely improved uh, compared to you know like like a like a if you go out to the store now because you can you can buy a brand a brand new record player now, but. Um, but it's like the technology is the same, but it's a little bit different at the same time. If it's that makes like sense. Uh, it's like if record pl- the record uh, it is what the record player would be modern. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, and uh, and then of course you know we can't forget about uh, PCs, you know, home computers. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. another another big thing. It's like you know the the eighties was the birth of so many uh, different things that mm-hmm. we have gotten so used to now because before that computers were mainly used by uh, businesses mm-hmm. and major corporations and things like that and a, a computer used to take up a whole room I mean you just had these <laughs> you had these big <laughs> banks of machines you know and that was the computer and gradually over the years they kept uh, you know, figuring out ways to condense that and and make it smaller and smaller and smaller to where you literally could just have a PC and a monitor right there in your home and access everything that everyone else. Could. There, there's a joke there somewhere, and I don't know what that joke is yet. But 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 it will come to me. It will be like probably three weeks down the line. I'll have a joke for you about yeah. that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, in in most cases, uh, bigger is better. But in the case of uh, of you know computer technology, smaller is is what everybody wants. Yeah. Same with uh, phones. You know, compact. Yeah. And yeah. now we basically yeah now we basically got computers inside our phones. You mm-hmm. know, which is crazy. The, you know, just to think of what we're able to do now, uh, which at that time just seemed uh, crazy. I mean, it's a both. A, there's a pros and cons to having a computer with you all the time, and that's because you have access to knowledge all the time. Mm-hmm. And I can see the pros to that, but I can also see the cons to that, too. I mean, I'd say there's a lot more know-it-alls all over the world yeah. now. Yeah, I mean... Like, well, let me just check here on my phone and... Oh, yeah. I, I You know, I, I've uh, known people like that 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 uh, just, you know, you, you tell them something and they immediately feel the need to fact-check you. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, they get on their phones like, well, you know, like they don't believe you, you know, mm-hmm. and... Uh, now, granted, you know, no matter what anybody tells you, you can't believe everything that you read on Google on yeah. the internet. Shoot, um, I mean, know it alls. I mean, I mean, with me in particular, if there's a know it all in the room, I just let them believe. Yeah. You know, just let them go. Just let them do. do um, I mean, like uh, I had a boss that told me about uh, how he knew the Joker was from Dark Horse Comics before he entered DC Comics, and I was <laughs> thinking, wait a minute, what? What are you talking about? Uh, but but I just I just like yeah you're right yeah go, go. Uh, like I remember some sort of uh, Keanu Reeves interview where he said something like that two plus two equals uh, six you're right go on have, yeah. a, have a wonderful day <laughs> oh, there like I go that, kicking my camera <laughs> it's, it's like if that you know whatever helps you sleep at night if that makes you feel better hey you know just just roll with that yeah um, but I, I think. Um, Something that really describes the 80s in a lot of ways is typically I feel like everything was bigger in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, everything was big. Shoulder big, pads? Big hair, yes. Yeah. Shoulder pads, oh gosh. Like, <laughs> the, and you know, and that, and you know, they say everything comes back around. That's a trend that I really did not want to see come back around. It with did, the shoulder didn't pads. It? It's like you had all all these women walking around uh, that looked like they were wearing uh, coat hangers inside their dresses. <laughs> it just it was not a good so, look some, at all. Some of those trends have come back, but they have. Yeah. It, it is coming back around. Uh, you had the uh, big uh, big sunglasses. You know, everybody was into the huge. Uh, 
you know aviators and yeah. and uh when and i have a pair of aviators i love love the aviators mm-hmm. uh, i'd say those are the only good glasses yeah, obviously are, yeah it, it, but you know but then you had the uh you know the the plastic sunglasses too that you know the the giant ones that look yeah. like you know big bug eyes and uh, big jewelry, you know, mm-hmm. everything was big, you know, giant hoop earrings and, and things <laughs> like that. And, and people just wearing uh, lots of, uh, you know, gold and everything around their neck and, and uh, rings and bracelets. And it was like, you know, every everything was, was big in that decade. Yeah. But uh, there was a lot of big things that came out of that year, uh, film-wise as well, and TV-wise. I'd say those are like the, the biggest... Um, the biggest. What, what's the word? Some of the most uh, some of the most influential and and iconic movies I think came out of that that decade. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know we certainly uh, there's just a a laundry list of of movies that we could go through that that we love from that decade. Um, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, I have a list here of all the and to tell you the truth, there's movies on my list and there's movies on your list. I know yeah. that that we will never get to all of them. I don't yeah. think. Well, I mean, we will eventually. We will, we'll probably yeah, we'll, talk we'll about separately, a lot of them, but, but not not in this but episode. Not now, yeah, uh, but I mean, the uh, when you get into pop culture and how uh, entertainment, you know, influenced uh, pop culture. The the eighties was huge for like the teen teen comedy. That mm. is that's where uh, we really started seeing a lot more of those movies, especially like, with uh, John Hughes movies. Yes, uh, but you had uh, movies like uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I've not seen that. Oh, you got it. You got to see it. I mean, that it's that's like classic. Uh, uh, I've not seen it. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, uh, even my dad, like when I said uh, I've not seen that movie, he, he's like, "You've not seen that movie?" Mm-hmm. Like offended, offended completely. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, we actually. The funny thing was, uh, I had a, a, f- a film history class uh, in college, yeah. and believe it or not, that was one of the films that we studied. Uh, that's not the kind of movie you would think would belong in a yeah. uh, movie about film history, but it just goes to show you, you know, how much movies like that have become part of our of our culture and and have influenced uh, the way that we see things and the, the way that we do things. You know, so you had movies like that and The Breakfast Club mm. uh, and uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, you know, and so when I think of in terms of. Uh, like culture and fashion and and music and all those kinds of things like those are movies that kind of stand out to me uh from from the 80s that sort of embody that the direction that you know everybody was uh was heading at that time yeah and those are some great films from a great writer which uh john hughes i don't know if you knew this uh yeah you had to have because you watched the same docu uh the docu series uh you know um Oh, what's it called? The movies that, the movies made, that us. made us. Yeah, yeah on Square, Netflix. Yeah. Where they were, where he was talk. They were talking about John Hughes, how he would go off into a cabin for about a week and then come back and have a full final draft script. Mm. Like, oh my goodness, I wish I could work that way. My mind is always yeah I, I, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, it's certainly uh, some of some of our favorite movies of all time. You know, came out of that. Oh, yes. decade two and and uh you know and i know you have you have a list of of movies in particular that uh <laughs> yeah you know oh geez uh and i didn't even list all of them i was like you know what I'm, I, I i can't i can't list all of them. Oh, it's There's, impossible yeah oh man uh, i'll just name a few of them here uh let's see the, the star wars movie the last two of the original trilogy of star wars mm-hmm. uh my personal favorite being return of the jedi um, yes, I like the the ones with the Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I liked. I mean, I, I liked that one too. Like as a yeah. kid, that one was kind of the one that, that, that really a lot of, stood out to me. I don't know yeah. why, but it for some reason, it's, for some reason, it it's uh, always been more uh, of the. Well, I guess they're technically not the original trilogy because it started with Episode Four, but. But mm-hmm. yeah, but the the in terms of production, the the first three movies, mm-hmm. uh, Return of the Jedi is is the one that for whatever reason seems to be more memorable to me. So yeah. I get that. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, what else did we got? Um, who Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yes, another another classic. A uh, film by uh, Robert Zemeckis, who just went on to make another classic movie that we both really enjoy as well. Yes. Uh, needs no introduction, I don't mm-hmm. think, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a certain movie about uh, time travel that mm-hmm. uh, involves a, a DeLorean and uh, and Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. I don't oh, think yes. I don't think we even have to mention the name. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, Robert Zemeckis uh, has certainly directed. Uh, some wonderful movies over the years and mm-hmm. and you know and many of those uh came from the 80s so yeah which on our very first episode that was actually how i was referencing a callback uh, uh to that first episode when i was t- saying uh steven spielberg and a certain other director i was going to go on and then Worthy i at. just got just, off track yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which i do tend to do yeah. so um and uh, uh, a personal Christmas favorite of mine, uh, Gremlins. Yes, yes. Gremlins is a Christmas movie uh, mm-hmm. for for those who... Uh, I, I don't really think there's anybody that could argue that. You might yeah. you might be able to argue that with it's Die, a dark die Hard. Christmas but, film. It's but I still think yeah. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Uh, yeah. But no, it, it is. It is a Christmas movie. The entire movie takes place if it during takes Christmas place, time. If it takes place during Christmas, it's a Christmas yeah. movie. He got, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, Billy got Gizmo as a Christmas present. Mm-hmm. You know, so. But yeah, love that movie as well. And, um, of course, we, we all always mention Ghostbusters. Yes. Um, RoboCop. Yeah. Another one that, uh, like, uh, sometimes I kind of forget that. Uh, it is one of those movies that is very, um, it, it's in your face, but also telling you the truth of how society really is. And that's that's a scary thing, too. Because yeah. here's, here's another funny thing. Okay, it was, uh, it was true of that time, and then the reboot did the exact same thing, flipped it around, and told you what society is today. The reboot was not as good, but it was still doing the same exact thing. Yeah, it was still making uh, relevant social commentary. Yeah, and uh, I I think those are the most important films, too. Um, What what else can I mention real quick here? Uh, My personal favorite, possibly my first 80s film that I've ever seen, Batman. Yes, uh, that uh, is one that uh, certainly deserves uh, mention, and and you know that we'll definitely talk in more detail about. But yeah, yeah. that that was uh, huge for me too because I was not really um, into Batman. I was not mm-hmm. you know a, a Batman fan uh, before that. Like I, I was. I was a, a little familiar at that point with mm-hmm. the TV series from the 60s, you know, which yeah. I did, uh, you know, I, I did kind of enjoy yeah. uh, as a kid. But that movie, you know, in 1989, it, like it it took, I think it took everybody in a different direction mm-hmm. in how they looked at the yeah. character. And I was like, wow, this is really good. And it's so funny because everyone, everyone was like saying, Michael Keaton is Batman. What? Yeah, they're what? like you can't have Beetlejuice as Batman. You, that's not going to work. You know, he was mostly known for comedy at that point, and they just couldn't they couldn't picture it. It, it is so funny because you're coming from a you're coming off of a, another Batman that's Adam West, which is pretty much a comedy, Camp, campy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're 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 getting up in arms about a comedian playing Batman. Yeah, and then the comedian actually turns up a performance that is dark and brooding. Still. Uh, still my favorite Batman to oh, this for day. Sure. For sure. Yeah. He he is Batman. And to this day, he often quotes that he is Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's, uh, he's, uh, sp- he's spoken at uh, at commencements for mm-hmm. various colleges and yeah. things oh, like yes. that. And, yes. And, he, he, says, uh, he, said, um, he said, I'm going to leave you with these uh, three words. And these three words are very important. If I'm going to leave you, I'm going to leave you with these, with these three words. And these three words are... <laughs> I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> he, he will I always am be Batman. He will always be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two words, actually. Well, oh, two yeah. Words. Was it two words? <laughs> yes. He said two words. <laughs> These two words, but no. These two words. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's uh, that That was certainly uh, movies like that were a great way to uh, to end 
uh, that decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Oh, and I have to mention another film because we actually have not talk. We've not spoke a lot about animated movies, mm -hmm. and I do believe. I mean, we both have uh, a love for animation. Animation is very important. They have just as important things to tell, and sometimes sure. they go into adult matters um, that, kid, that will go over the kids' heads, but the adults will go, "Oh, yeah. you know." Well, you know, well, animation is limitless. Mm -hmm. You know, as you can do so oh, much. Yeah, more you could do animation. so yeah. many scopes and everything. I mean, I, I even talked to you about uh, doing a little animated film at one point mm -hmm. for one of. One of my projects that is like so out there that I couldn't possibly get Hollywood to fund it. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, if I were to get that big, you know. Uh, but the, this animated movie is from Don Bluth. Oh, which, I uh, remember movies from from Don Bluth. Uh -oh. And th those were some some really good ones. Honestly, those were really good. Uh, the one that I grew up on the most. I did not grow up on American Tales. I was gonna. I was gonna mention that. I was like, mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm. I'm a little fuzzy because I was yeah. so little. But I. I think an American Tale may have been the first movie that I saw in a theater. Was it? Was American Tales eighties or it was, was 80, it 86? 86? Yeah. So I would have been like five mm -hmm. at that point. It was not the not the first movie I ever saw because we know yeah. what that one was. But but. I think that may have been the first movie that I saw in a theater. My uh, my first, um, well, I can't say this was my first, but the, the Don Bluth movie that I have to say is one of my personal favorites in animation. One, it's it, it goes into some pretty dark territory as well. Uh, I guess as a kid, I liked the dark stuff. Mm. I mean, even when I was little, my mom forgot. Bid, forbade me. This is not an 80s movie because it came out in 92. Sorry, I kind of jumped ahead. But it's a sequel to the Batman. So I have to mention, my mom did not want me to watch Batman Returns. Yeah. Um, but I was allowed to watch this, and this was a pretty dark one. Uh, Secret of Nim. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, something about that opening with the, the hand, the, the rat hand writing there and mm -hmm. holding that jewel it's very beautiful uh very it's a beautiful beautiful animated film no there's just such artistry such craftsmanship in that one picture and it's it's heartbreaking too it's really heartbreaking yeah. and you know when you're a kid uh you know you uh, you know you see those things and you know there's something special about it mm -hmm. but you know, until you get older, you can't really put a finger on what that is. Now we can look at it and we recognize and we say, oh, that's that's beautiful storytelling there. That the way that they framed that or or the, you know, the, yeah. the quality of the animation or or, you know, those dark themes or whatever. All we know as a kid is like, wow, this is different than anything that I've ever seen before. We don't know why we like it. Yeah. But we do. I think most most adults even uh, will miss the fact that an animated movie is not just for kids. No, it's actually telling you something else that's pretty important. If it's rated G, if if a movie is rated G, it's, okay, it's for kids. Yeah, but if but it's, it's rated, also but it's also I mean G stands for general oh, well, audience, yeah. so it's really for everybody. It is yes. Um, but but uh, I, when I said that, I started to bite my tongue. I was like, wait a minute. That movie, Babe, I believe that one was the talking about mm -hmm. pig. With the pig, I, yeah. I believe that one was Ragey. I should go back on what I just said there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's true. I mean, because there are uh, revolving themes, you know, in these animated movies and, and shows and things. There, There's always some kind of a yeah. moral message, and very often... PG. It's, PG yeah. is parental guidance. So when an anime movie says parental guidance, it's basically it's saying... It's going to have some adult themes in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think people miss on that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've definitely... Uh, you know, the 80s was definitely big uh, for movies, no question about that. Uh, you know, television as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, uh, I think, like, the the big thing in the 80s that was, I guess, uh, revolutionary, not revolutionary, but that took television in a different direction was, was just uh, cable TV. Mm -hmm. And that becoming more widely available. You had, uh, you had these, you know, for a long time, you only had, you know, three 
uh, TV networks. You had mm. CBS and NBC and ABC. Uh, but then gradually as, you know, like, you know, Ted Turner was really big in, in introducing, you know, cable with uh, like TBS and, and uh, TNT and uh, CNN and, you know, the like the 24-hour news networks and things like that. Yeah. All that stuff was becoming more popular uh, in the 80s and the premium movie channels and, and uh, things like that. So that certainly took you know tv in a whole new direction and then of course you know the shows some of the shows that were on then uh many of which you know were you know some of our favorites but uh when i think of you know pop culture in the 80s you know i, I think of of shows like knight rider mm. uh david and, hasselhoff yeah. yes i mean it doesn't get any more <laughs> 80s than than david hasselhoff yeah <laughs> and his and his big curly hair and leather mm. leather jackets uh, and uh, Miami Vice. Gosh, mm. Miami Vice. When you talk about like '80s fashion, you know Miami that, that Vice probably, probably had more influence than yeah. anything else with like the pastel colors, <laughs> uh, wearing suit jackets with the sleeves rolled up, mm-hmm. and uh, and deck shoes with no socks, and you know things like that. I mean that that show was so visually was so iconic uh, for yeah. the '80s. Um, you know, Twenty One Jump Street. Uh, mm. Stuff like that, you know. All Twenty One Jump Street were, was was it Twenty One Jump Street that pretty much uh, 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 pretty much showed the world Johnny Depp? Was it that one? He had well, he had. I think by then he had already done. He had already done been in a, night, a nightmare on Elm Street. It was uh, in 80, yes. like eighty four. Yes, that's right. That's right. That, uh, was, that was, first. was probably the movie that really that probably first. got him noticed. Yeah. and then because uh, I think Twenty One Jump Street, I want to say was. 87 I think was when we came mm, out uh, yeah. I have to I, have to I, double I believe check you're right I believe you're that. right I believe it was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street that came out first yeah but still I mean it, you know oh, those that, things the 80s definitely introduced everybody to Johnny that, Depp and I will say Nightmare on Elm Street really creeped me out <laughs> Um, my wife still won't watch it. Oh she, yeah, she absolutely hates. Not, not even the she remake. Hate, she hates the Freddy Krueger movies. She's like, oh. she's like, uh, you know, she said I can watch. Uh, you know, uh, she doesn't really like the the slasher movies in general. But I, I but can't that say one, that those I do in either. particular, she cannot cannot stand those. I, I can't really say that I do either. There is uh, there is um, I can't I can't I, I I forgot to check to see if it was. But uh, I can't say for certain, but it might have been. Uh, but uh, the only sort of like slasher films that I would actually watch is the ones that actually are directed by Sam Raimi, Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I've seen all of those as well. Mm-hmm. Um, have you Have you watched the TV show that came out on Stars? Yeah, Ash vs <laughs> Evil Dead. Actually, I I thought that was uh, you know that's yeah. getting off topic a little bit, but I, yeah, I think little, that, that's not but 80s. I think, but I think but, that was you know uh, my opinion on that was I thought it was kind of better than oh, the movies. Yes. But, Honestly, yeah, yeah, it really did. Um, but, um, but I know you. I know you have a lot of shows too that mm. that you thought of. With, you know, I just mentioned a few. The ones that I thought yes. uh, that really stood out as far as uh, you know, because we're talking about pop culture and the influence of, of entertainment on right. pop culture. But but you have I, a lot of we have well, a lot in common you, as far as you know eighty shows that we yeah. You, you mentioned Miami Vice. Yeah. Um, I have Miami Vice on here. Um, of course, I ha- I also have. A team, the A team, the A team. Yes, another one of my uh, all-time favorite shows. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was huge. Oh yes, I was a Turtles fanatic uh, um, beginning in the the late '80s because the animated series came mm-hmm. out in uh, '87. Yeah, and the movies uh, and the movie didn't come out until like the '90s. '90, yeah. yeah, but but the '80s definitely uh, introduced us to those characters in the comic books uh, too. And um, and this is He Man and the Masters oh, of yeah. the Universe. Absolutely, can't um, can't mention the '80s without mentioning uh, He Man. I, I preferred He Man over Thundercats. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the animation for Thundercats was were great, but I just did not like the concept. Yeah. Um, which uh, He Man also gave us the 
Dolph Lundgren uh, starring He-Man, mm-hmm. uh, the Masters of the Universe, it was called. Probably one of the most popular, like, <laughs> yeah. it has a cult following. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see that. I can uh, see did that. Not do, did not do well uh, financially. Was It's kind of regarded, I think, by a lot of people in the industry as a little bit more of a B movie, but, mm-hmm. it, but it took on a certain life of its own, I guess, just because of the popularity of I was, I was waiting the for series. I was waiting for that one bald guy. I can't remember his name, the actor's name, but you know which one I'm talking about. He was the principal in Back to the Future. Oh, uh, 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 James, uh, James Tolkien. The play. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I, was, I was seriously waiting for him to be, uh, be like, slacker. To <laughs> <the one I'm- laughs> Uh, just uh, uh, so oh, and another thing about the eighties, Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yes, well yeah, I mean, he, uh, Schwarzenegger, much like uh, Sylvester Stallone, they yes. their 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 careers, their uh, careers kind of were kind of started right, at the right yeah right yeah. about the same time. And actually, they were very much competitive too. Oh, they were. Uh, yeah. They were always uh, competing, you know, for uh, certain roles, and mm-hmm. and they sort of had a fun little rivalry going yeah, on. There. I believe I believe Schwarzenegger actually tricked uh, uh, Stallone into one movie. I think it was uh, uh, Don't oh, Shoot uh, or, sto- my, or uh, Stop it, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Yeah, which which uh, <laughs> which Sly still regards as the worst movie that he's ever done. Uh. And, but even though we that's should do not, an episode on that, we should. It's yeah. uh, even though it's not part of this decade, it's like it's yeah, worth it's worth uh, mentioning that just because of that rivalry the two of them. Yeah, they were yeah. like they were like the two top action stars of of the eighties. Like uh, Schwarzenegger got uh, uh, the Terminator, um, Commando. I had to double check on Terminator because I think that was early. That has eighty four. Eighty four was yeah. when the first one came out. I had to double check on that one. Uh, Commando and Predator. Yeah, yeah. Stallone had uh, you know, well, Rocky started in the seventies, but mm-hmm. transitioned to the eighties. But then he had Rambo, you know, yes. which was basically mm-hmm. his, you know, sort of like his version of of Commando. those movies like Commando and yeah. Predator and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they were kind of doing these similar roles. And Cobra, Cobra was another oh, yes. really good Cobra. action movie from the eighties. Uh, so yeah, all of that stuff. Uh, you know, this, this this is the this is what you know the eighties brought us in terms of you know uh, of what was being put on screen in movies and, and TV. Uh, now uh, music, uh, we hadn't talked about music yet, but certainly. Oh, yes. Music in the '80s took on uh, a whole new life, and I think a lot of that had to do with the birth of MTV. Mm. Uh, and, and honestly, honestly, there's nothing that I mean. If you tried to remake those songs today, it's not going to be any good. No, uh, it was just it, there was just a different style and vibe about the '80s that just has not been has not been repeated you know you can't you just really can't imitate it yeah you can't replicate it at all uh but you know mtv just you know it it it, to every you know music has always been a huge part of of society and culture and everything even going all the way back to you know classical you know music so it's it's you know music influences us in ways that sometimes we we don't even understand or realize but Mm -hmm. uh but with MTV and especially with music videos in particular, you know, that, uh, you know, elevated music to a different level because now, you know, people could actually, you know, see their favorite artists performing these songs. And then you had these like, you know, almost like, you know, little movies that would accompany them and, you know, kind of told the story. And from then on, you heard certain songs in a different way because now you had an image in your head, you know, to go with them. And, um, and certainly some of the artists that come to mind, you know, when I think of that, that decade and uh, music videos in particular, uh, you know, were Madonna. I mean, you, you know, mm-hmm. you can't really talk about the 80s without mentioning Madonna. And certainly, you know, a, a lot of these uh, artists, again, kind of goes back to fashion and, and the ways they yeah. influenced uh, fashion in the 80s with the, you know, with, with lots of denim and leather and, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, things like that. But, um, you know, Michael Jackson, 
you know, certainly. I mean, yeah. Uh, again, you know, he he was already known, but the '80s was was when he, you know, was uh, becoming a solo artist after he mm-hmm. broke away from, you know, from his brothers, uh, and you know. The, the, like Thriller, I mean, Thriller yeah. is still one of the all-time greatest music videos <laughs> ever because it was basically done like a film. I mean, it was directed yeah. by John Landis, uh, and it just the that just shows you the the crossover and like you know the influence that you know that movies had on on music and vice versa, and then it, so it was like the perfect way to bring those two things. Uh, together and suddenly it was like you know this song became something that was <laughs> all of a sudden really like cinematic and yeah. uh, um and then of course um you know one one of my favorite uh groups uh, from the 80s and you know and I believe one of yours too yeah. was uh, Huey Lewis and the News yes uh they were the kings of uh uh you know when it, when you think of uh bands as, as opposed to like solo artists mm mm-hmm. You know, it, again, it doesn't really get any more '80s than that, and yeah. and they were some of the first to when you know when MTV came out and started putting out music yes. videos. They were one of the first groups to they were, to make they? Yeah. music videos. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely and, worth uh, worth mentioning there. And and, and, and and yes, Hugh Lewis in the news. I mean, yes, you you have to be a fan if you sung. You know their song at your wedding. I did. I yeah. I, 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 I uh, sang uh, "The Power of Love" to my bride at uh, my wedding uh, last year, and uh, just yeah. And it was such a because because that's just that's just me, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and all of my friends, you know, know that and know yeah. that, that that kind of thing is just a, a part of my personality because yeah. I love to sing anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> And, but, and there I was in the background, looking like a like a scorned lover. <laughs> <laughs> like, like how could you, Keith? How could you marry? Her? He he did. He kept he kept he kept was sort of like it. All the I was looking. You know, we look back at our wedding pictures, and I was like, oh, there's Dylan. You know, he's just he's just sort of you know just you know just hanging out in the background, just you know chilling. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of mad at the photographer for doing that to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he even came by right next to me and just took a picture of me just right there. Yeah. Just, and he's like, this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. It's like instead of telling you to, like, do something or, yeah. or be, you know, or uh, pose or whatever, it just... Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I was tapping my foot while you were singing and everything like that, but that was not enough. I still look the way I did. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean uh, that. Uh, you know, it's just it's just feel good, feel good mm, music. Yeah. You know, is the best way to describe that. And uh, and you know, of course, they uh, you know provided you know two songs uh, for for Back to the Future for the yes. first Back to the Future, yeah. and which is what which is what introduced me to their music, and mm-hmm. and from then on I was like you know I was a Huey Huey Lewis fan, um, and then that that kind of leads into uh, talking about soundtracks and the way that. Uh, yeah, soundtracks were becoming they were becoming really popular actually yeah, yeah. it's uh, because before then you really didn't have like like there was occasionally no movies that had uh, a, a specific song played no, by you maybe uh, you might have maybe one or two songs that were mm-hmm. written for a movie but not but as far as like having yeah. uh, hiring uh, you know different artists to come mm-hmm. in and and do a song for a movie so that you could put together a whole album yeah. that wasn't didn't really happen before. So, the so you, you you had Back to the Future, which was one of them. Ghostbusters, which had they Ray had Parker great Jr. Sound, great soundtracks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh my goodness, you can't even you you cannot replicate Ray Parker Jr.'s uh, song there. Um, and then you even had Batman. Batman had his Prince. Prince. Prince did the entire soundtrack for he which did is almost which is which is almost songs on that. Uh, like no, it was literally that was literally it. Like every song on the Batman soundtrack was by Prince, which mm-hmm. was again, you know, unheard of at that time because you know typically with a soundtrack you have you know a variety of artists uh, mm-hmm. on there but he literally did the entire he did every song for the batman mm-hmm. soundtrack and and just and but just to separate because uh, some people may not really know 
the difference. I, I think most people do, but the difference between a soundtrack and a score. Mm, you know, yes. the, the score is the is the that's from the composer. Yes, that's like the uh, the music that accompanies uh, this this the action and the, the mm-hmm. scenes throughout the movie. The, the back the, the background. Yeah, the music, music is the emotional core to the movie. Yeah. That is the music is actually telling you what you should be feeling at that time, whereas a soundtrack is just to accompany the movie. It's a uh, it's basically like the how would I describe uh, it the, the 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 love story of the movie the um, the um, feel maybe the feel, um, yeah and I think it's also soundtracks I think are more of a marketing thing they're, it's they, certainly yeah they're definitely it, more marketing it, because it certainly it boosts not only the the movie the popularity of the movie but also the artists who mm-hmm. are you know who are on the soundtrack yeah. most of which are usually already. It's very certainly, popular by then, and it certainly helps out a movie that actually is not any good. Oh yeah, uh, uh, which you soundtrack would see, can elevate a movie for sure. You would see that. I mean, obviously, the movies we've mentioned there are really good, so that just elevates them yeah. to another new yeah. high. Uh, yeah. Later on, in like certain other decades, like nineties, two thousands, two thousand tens, whenever you get a soundtrack, usually those movies are not very yeah. good. But there, but there have been more. Uh, we have seen more actual musical scores from movies starting to be released. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, even from some mm-hmm. of those classic films that we love because because they realized there's a market for that out there, too. And yeah. people that are like, you know, like, I really like that music, but I, I would love to hear it without all the dialogue and, mm-hmm. and sound effects and everything. There uh, is a YouTuber. Crowding it. Uh, there is a YouTuber. I, you might have a, quite an enjoyment out of this here. But uh, he hasn't done a video in so long, and I was first introduced to this U- uh, this YouTuber way back when, when uh, YouTube was just first starting out. And he actually took the soundtracks from Batman '89. Um, he might have done one for Ghostbusters. I don't know. I don't think so. No, but he did do one for Back to the Future. Hmm. And uh, and he, it's this uh, YouTuber is called Golden Tusk. And he's, hmm. not, he's not done anything in a long time, but he will take the uh, the soundtrack and actually he will actually put lyrics to those those sound the soundtrack there. Oh, okay. So so for Back to the Future, he goes, "You built a time machine out of a car, a DeLorean." <laughs> <laughs> That's really awesome. So, there, there's another um, there's another company out there, um, and I wish I could remember the name of it now, uh, but. There's another company that has started taking soundtracks from particularly movies from the 80s and have uh, rendered 16-bit versions of of the musical score and and also some pieces from the soundtracks. And so basically it's the music from the film, but it's done in the style of like... uh, video game music from the 80s as, as if the as if that music had been made for a video game that that um, is great that is great and uh, i'll i'll look that up and and maybe mention that uh, on the next episode because i it, the name of the uh, company escapes me they have a website and they've done they've already done uh the soundtrack for batman 1989 and also ghostbusters 2 that's been their first two uh releases so weird calling it batman 1989 now yeah, but you almost have to because you know because if you don't just, want to get it because if you just say with batman, the, you could you could get it confused with the 60s yeah. uh, tv series or, or the more recent one with uh, or twilight or, or, yeah or the batman with yeah, yeah with uh robert uh, pattinson mm-hmm. um but uh so yeah i mean the the eighties uh without a doubt one of the most memorable uh, decades ever and even if if you even if you didn't grow up in the eighties it's still uh it still has an impact today and and yeah, um, I'm still on still on right here that. Yeah. and uh like I said, you know everything comes back around eventually, and we've started seeing that more and more uh you know that uh, the eighties is has left a, a lasting uh, legacy uh, and impact on a lot of us. Um, well, we're just about out of time, uh, but uh, before we go, uh, please remember to subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel. Uh, and when you subscribe, uh, be sure to tap that uh, bell icon uh, to make sure that you're receiving all the notifications when new content is posted. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our socials. 
Uh, you'll find those links at the bottom of your screen, um, as well as down below in the video's description, uh, and at the end of every episode in the closing credits. So there's no way you can miss them. Uh, leave your comments and questions for us. Uh, you can reach us by uh, commenting on YouTube or on our socials. Uh, or by emailing us at uh, kimmelandcox at gmail.com. That's our official podcast email. Uh, we want to hear from you. Talk to us. You know, we want you to be a part of the conversation, and uh, that just, you know, makes it uh, a lot more enjoyable uh, for us. Uh, you can also support us on our Patreon page. Uh, we need the support of people like you. Uh, you know, check out that page to learn more about how you can help and uh, we've got that link for you, too. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's all we've got for you today. Uh, we hope you'll join us next week. And until then, be good to yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Good, 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 you dipstick.